when I think of basil cellars and our winemaking philosophy, uh, one word comes to mind, and that's elegance. Our wines are not overly extracted, our wines are refined, and they have balance. And there's three things that stand out for me uh, when it comes to elegance, and those are um, preserving the fruit, um, managing the tannins, and the proper use of oak. I think uh, preserving the fruit starts in the vineyard. Um, from day one when we prune all the way till the fruit comes in and we hand harvest that last block, um, that all plays a big part of, of preserving the best fruit for us. Uh, Ryan and our crew does a tremendous job giving us exceptional quality and uh, we have a good relationship. He knows what I want in the fruit and, uh, and, and, and there's just a good, good communication between me and him um, so we can have the best possible fruit coming through the door. Uh, we have a small crew of women that are very meticulous, um, very detail oriented and they, does a, they, they do a great job um, and sit, setting a very high standard, um, training our vines, maintaining them and, and give us uh, just a good quality grape at the end of the day. Um, I like to make my decisions uh, when I pick, um, based, it's all based on flavor. Um, I'll run my analysis, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I'll check my bricks, my TA, um, and my pH, and that'll be a baseline for me, you know, when the, the fruit's is getting ready. But ultimately, for me, it's about flavor. Um, uh, all my um, picking decisions are based on flavor and optimum ripeness. Now, when we bring the fruit in, um, we have a, a small crew that hand sorted it on the line, and then it goes through a distemmer crusher and then through a gravity-fed system into a fermentation bin. And that's one part that I really enjoy um, is that we have that gravity fed system and not a sump pump. So we don't pump our skins and juice into a fermenter. Um, it's gravity fed, it's a gentle process and uh, that's the first step that we actually are managing our tannins um, right after distemming and crushing. Once it comes through the, um, through the door, into the fermenters, uh, fermentation, um, process, temperature plays a huge part. Uh, with our white wines, um, I like to ferment um, at a low temperature, slow fermentation um, for an extended period of time. I like to keep my white wines on the lease uh, for long as I can and do lease stirring and batonnage. That adds complexity and depth um, to the wine and also increases aromatics. Um, for the red wines, most of the wines are open top fermentation. Um, they like one and a half, two ton fermenters. We use uh, pump overs and punch downs as a way of extracting. In some lots I'll do extended maceration um, to give the wine extra color. Um, and then we also are very selective um, what wines will do perform pump overs and punch downs. Um, I think the benefit of pump overs for me is you know you introduce that air to the to the juice and the wine and that definitely helps with color development um, and then pump uh, punch downs um, is a gentle approach yet again um, on the, on the extraction process so um, important for me is during fermentation to uh, taste regularly and that's the, the number one way that I can manage the tannins is, is knowing um, when to increase the amount of punch downs or decrease and um, knowing where the wines are during the extraction process and managing the tannins really well. Um, most of our reds will finish uh, primary fermentation in barrel um, and so we'll press them off uh, when they're ready 
they'll go back into barrel, finish primary fermentation, and then um, we'll be ready to undergo the secondary fermentation and malolactic fermentation. And during this time, the wine's uh, true aromatic profile will develop um, and you'll see that these wines will become fuller, softer and rounder. Um, I'm not a big fan of racking my wines too much and um, I only will rack when I think it's necessary and when I think the wine needs to get off the lease. Um, the, the third part um, of elegance that I like, is, that plays a big part, is um, the proper use of oak. And uh, here at Basil we use French and American oak. Um, the French oak, of course, uh, more subtle, uh, respect the fruit a little better and are, integrates really well where the American oak is more pronounced and just creates that beautiful accent uh, behind the wine. Um, our aging um, time, most of our wines will age anything from 12 to 18, 20 months depending on the varietal. Um, personally, I like to age my Merlot, Malbec, Syrah uh, for about 12 to 14 months and then those varietals will see mainly French oak just because it integrates so much with the fruit and it, it, it freshen um, the whole palate and it preserves it really well. And then at the most I'll use about 30%, 40% new oak on those varietals. Uh, when it comes to Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Petit Bordeaux, uh, Cabernet Franc, Carmenere, uh, we use French oak, but also, um, importantly, American oak. The American oak, like I said before, just adds um, that extra layer, that beautiful accent behind the wine, and those varieties can actually um, really hold up to, to that oak. Um, and then we'll age those varieties anything from 14 to 20 months. Um, the percentage of oak, um, mainly on a Cabernet, can vary anything from 50 to 80 percent new oak. Um, at the end of the day, uh, we want to make wine um, that we think people um, will enjoy and will like. And uh, personally, I like to remove myself from the process um, and let the fruit speak for itself and not manipulate the wines too much.